All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time we left off with the Chinese hit their stride. Uh, basically, they fought their way into Burma, things like that. We're now on to, and a little child shall lead them. February 7th, 1944. Saved from Inuak talk. Don't know if I said that right. Children of natives rescued from the Japanese in Ainuatok Atoll, being put ashore on a peaceful island by Coast Guardmen, manning landing craft. A few days after the American invasion of the Pacific Island, which did not fall as rapidly as some of the other Japanese-controlled islands, it was not until the end of the month that capitulation of the atoll was officially announced. American casualties were unexpectedly low in the Marshall Campaign, undoubtedly due to the terrific bombardment American warships, including new battleships, poured on enemy installations. On Inwatok, as on other areas taken by the Americans, our troops were, for the most part, warmly welcomed. The Japanese had proved themselves bad colonizers. Yeah. So the Japanese uh, were a little cruel to the people of many of these islands. So the people kind of responded in kind to them. So so they were more happy to see the Americans or the Australians, you know, whoever was coming. Um, they wouldn't necessarily like us forever, but that's our own fault. And they did a lot of bad things to some of these people. But at the time, they were happy to get rid of the Japanese. Burial at Sea, February 1944. Last Rites. The flag-draped body of a United States Marine killed in the fighting on a Pacific Isle is consigned to the sea from a transport standing off the island. As two Navy chaplains in their uh, esp espicorporal robes conduct the burial at sea service, and the Marines' shipmates in their camouflage battle dress pay their last respects. Many of the Marines who were wounded in the fighting ashore had been ho hospitalized aboard ship. When they died, they were buried at sea. There were many scenes such as these as American action increased in the Pacific with a consequent rise in casualties. So yeah, Obviously, we can see. Barry, let's see. Then you can see the chaplains. Everyone. Very sad. Very, very sad. End of a Nazi dive bomber. February 8th, 1944. Down in flames over Anzil. A German dive bomber falls in flames into Anzio Harbor after being hit by Allied A gunners. During an attack on the landing beach shortly after the Allies had forced a landing, the Germans suffered tremendous losses in their effort to hinder the Allied advance. Yeah, so obviously, yes, the Germans are going to lose a lot of people here, but they're doing their best to just slow down the Allies. They do not want them making it. So they're going to do whatever they can to slow them down. And even if that means losing a few fighters and bombers and things like that. It's very unfortunate for those men. Aid for the Allies in Anzio. February 10th, 1944. Equipment to block the Nazis. One of the reasons the Allies were able to make such a stand in the Anzio battle was their ability to land men and material at all times due to the marked superiority in the air and on the sea. In this picture, an army engineer shore regiment composed of African-American troops is unloading ammunition from an LCT. Landing craft tank in the Anzio area. Any halt in the stream of supplies to Anzio would have cost the Allies the beachhead. We can see right there. A lot of those men doing the best they can to help get these supplies off. 
they're just happy to be helping. And uh, yeah, everyone's doing their part in this war. Uh, this war, we're not at the point yet of Vietnam, which will be, I think, the first time since the Civil War, I believe, where there will be black and white um, units together. But in this war, there were full black regiments, and uh, they had a part to play, and they did their job good. Now, they could have obviously been given more, but this is still a time of some racial inequality. So, while it is unfortunate, at least they were doing what they can to help in this fight. Two episodes in the fighting in Italy. February 1944. Blimey, what a rocket. A Canadian of the 8th Army plugs his ears as he and his buddies shoot a mortar into the direction of the German positions southeast of Tolo. For its size, the mortar makes the biggest racket of all the field guns. So yeah, you can see that guy like, oh gosh, what a loud freaking thing. And then in the picture in the bottom, our infantry troops don't stop to ask if anybody is home as they storm a farmhouse on the way to Casino. It houses a German op or, uh, observation post. My bad. Yeah, they're not knocking on the doors. They're rushing in, trying to get the Germans out as fast as they can. Side lights along the road to Rome. February 1944. The Allies are hospitable. In the picture on the right, a middle-aged, bald-headed Nazi prisoner of the 5th Army in the Anzio area is treated to a GI meal by his captors, while below, an American soldier finds the answer as to how the Italian child he's been playing with in, this, in his spare moments will look after an unsparing application of soap and water. So... When four-year-old Cleo, a friendly little girl, wandered into his encampment, he gave her a good scrubbing. After the scrub comes, the towel and Cleo's face show the results as our soldier nears the finish of the little Italian girl's... Uh, ablutions? Don't know how that's pronounced, but ablutions. So yeah, you can see the that guy. He looks absolutely pissed off. Look at the vein. He's just like, you taking a picture of me, you sons of... <laughs> but yeah, he's definitely not very happy. But at least he's got a nice meal. There's that. And yeah, soldier just helped clean this girl up. Nowadays, we would consider this probably a little creepy. But um, back then, he was just trying to help out. But uh, yeah. One man submarine at Anzio Beachhead. February 6th, 1944. Young Skipper. U.S. soldiers examine the one man submarine below, this one right here, which landed on the Peter Beach, Anzio Beachhead. The tube on the left is a torpedo, the other is the driving compartment, housing one man. The torpedo tube is shackled to the driving tube and can be released, allowing the pilot to return safely. The pilot was a 17-year-old Nazi, that guy right there, who was captured in the submarine. He told the officer that he had been in the service only six months. But yeah, look at this. Look at this thing. This would be horrifying. Can you imagine? You basically have to lay down the entire time. Being in this thing. This would be horrifying, I feel like, for many people. Uh, I bet he was captured because he was just happy to be out of the damn thing. But... Soldier of Mercy. February 1944. Precious burden. Going res resolutely about their work, <clears throat> the medical soldiers of the U.S. Army are continually on hand when they are needed. 
bearing precious blood plasma and other materials to save the lives of American soldiers. In this picture, loaded up with life-saving burden of blood plasma and blankets, this soldier of the medical corps prepares to set out to help the wounded in the casino area, as another corpsman helps adjust his sizable pack. Yeah, you can see everything he's carrying. The blankets, blood plasma, all that. Another corporal helping him out. Yeah, these men did uh, great work. They used to putting themselves in quite a bit of danger. Um, but it was what they needed to do to help ensure that their men could be healed up, be at least as good as they can be. And it uh, definitely is a honorable task. But with that, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I could improve on. I always appreciate your feedback. Uh, and as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.